son. You have to abide to it. If you don't abide to it, then I'm going to come and lock you up. And that was my dad's word straight to me. Folks, welcome back to another edition of Mashup Vix. I am Jason Bat, and this video is almost like a little follow-up from the last video that I made, um, but it's also at the same time it's an apology video. I want to apologize to Tatsisu, um, someone I spoke to on Facebook last weekend, Friday I think it was, and we got into a serious debate, and he made me realize something, okay, that I was pointing at one race. Um, so yes, maybe to a certain extent it made me look like I was racist, okay? That's not my intention. I'm not racist. My message in my videos is not to point out on one race. I have made videos before where different kinds of people and all kinds of colors on the race court can play certain type of cards. And um, white people especially, we like to play the sympathy card, even I admit. When I was a youngster... When I was like in my 20s and when I saw that I wasn't going to win this argument of the narrative that I chose, that, I, that I, the argument that I had and I started getting all snoppy and I started being apologetic. Um, not like now. I mean, this is something different. I'm apologizing for my actions, but I'm not apologizing to gain your sympathy so that I can win the argument of last videos, last video that I made, if you, if you get what I'm saying. This is a different apology. There's people out there, there's white people out there that use the sympathy card for their gain because of the mistakes that they realized. Um, but Tsitsu, please, and everybody else out there, accept my apology, please. I, I was not my intentions. And I think this is why I want to make this video because I want to explain myself better as to how people do pull the race card and the sympathy card to win a certain argument but let's let's start with this video quickly um, this is a video that I found on YouTube and it's, it's a typical example and, and I've seen it many times it's an American video but it uh, it doesn't have to be that I'm just choosing American videos okay the message is clear white people can act in this manner they can <laughs> let's watch the video quickly okay I guess literally want uh, a media And yes, there you saw the video, and, and it's true. There's countless videos. So just go on YouTube. I'm going to quickly put some links in the, beneath uh, the description. 
you watch those videos and come back and tell me that, that this is true, okay? And, and it is true. And um, to Titsu and I, we were having a heavy, heavy, heavy debate. And it was quite an interesting one. And we were talking about each other's belief systems that's in place. And um, a word that, that I brought to his attention that <clears throat> a lot of us are suffering from. We are suffering from cognitive disonance. Um let me just quickly read for you the definition of it. Um, those of you that know it, you know it. I mean, you were, you were educated on it. Um, the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. Um, that word, cognitive dissonance, has a lot got to do with your indoctrination, your upbringing, how you were brought up. Um, in the apartheid days, we were brought up that you can't play with, with black kids and you can't do this. And there were signs up saying, whites only. Um, a lot of you don't realize that if we, if my dad, for example, had to go up against the apartheid government, he would be locked away for treason uh, because you, you're going against the government. Okay. A lot of people don't seem to realize this. I myself, but children my age, people of color, black black children, that I played with in the park one time. And the cops came and chased us away. And when I went to my dad and I approached my dad and I said, Dad, I was playing with these kids in the in the park, doing nothing. I mean I was young, man, I was eight, nine years old. And my dad said, It's just the law of the country, my son. You have to abide to it. If you don't abide to it, then they're going to come and lock me up. And that was my dad's word straight to me. That was just the way it is. That was our indoctrination. And at the same time, there's lots of stories in the, in, in, on YouTube, on the internet and that. And I, I remember this particular one where this black little girl said to her father, and this is also in the apartheid era, where, let's go eat there. Let's go have a sandwich there. And the father said, no, we can't because that's a shop for, for white people. So yeah, you see our indoctrination, how we were brought up, uh, 24 years since democracy, and we're not really seeing much of a, of a better picture. People have still got lots of hate and anger issues. And the, the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation, was supposed to amend those issues and it was supposed to uh, reduce that, that heartache and, and, and get people to forgive each other and that but this is this is something this is a topic that, that that cannot be forgiven I mean what what happened in apartheid years is unforgivable but now I want to ask you now we are yeah we are 24 years later and we're living in we're not living in apartheid anymore we're living in democracy and democracy is exactly what it is for the people um, but people are still black people are still pulling the race card just like the white man, he pulls the sympathy card because he can't really pull the race card because we all know what racism stands for. Um, racism has more got to do with the privilege. The white man that went to school, the white man that always had a motor car, his parents took him to school. Uh, privilege, privilege, stuff that, that a lot of black children out there never had. So. When we go on Facebook and when we debate and when we make these type of videos and that, it's because of the narrative, the, my mindset, the way I am ad addressing issues and that, and people find it offensive because of my background, because of my privilege and because of my skin. So people like Tetsitsu, obviously, he was challenging me, challenging my mindset because his mindset is not like mine, okay? And this is why we need to break free from that, that, that nutshell, that nutshell, that, that cognitive disannoyance. Because each of us have got different belief systems. Break free from it. It's time for us to break free from it. Because we're not going anywhere. We just seem to be going backwards all the time. So let me quickly show you this video. Also I found it on YouTube. But, um, and it was also put on my link on Facebook. In it, um, about black people pulling the black card. But in, this, in essence the, the, ra the race card. Let's quickly watch the video. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to show you the whole video. I'm just going to show you a, a quick clip. 
and then I'll leave you the link and then you can watch the rest of it because it's, it's quite a long video. Let's just watch a few uh, scenes on, on, on it quickly. You've heard about the black card, right? No, not the one from Visa or American Express. This one is much more valuable. There are entire organizations that have been built upon it and individuals that have used it to acquire both wealth and influence. If this sounds like something you might wish to own, you should know that there is only one way you can get your hands on it. You have to be born with black skin. That's the only requirement, really. You can be poor, middle class, rich, it doesn't matter. The black card will still confer upon you an entire history of oppression, even if you've never been oppressed. Flash the black card and most white people will cower. Play the black card expertly and you can win awards, make millions, all the while claiming that the people who got you there somehow hate you. With a black card, you can sell books full of indecipherable prose, because with a card that powerful, who cares if your words make any sense? You can call yourself a civil rights leader and shake down multinational corporations, or you can torch your own neighborhood because you didn't like the outcome of a grand jury verdict. Ironically, the people you might think have the most legitimate claim to the black card refuse to use it. Take my grandfather. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you now, do, do, do you think what that lady's saying is right? I, I don't know. I, I can't say much because if I say much, then I'm going to get train smashed. I'm going to get labeled a racist again. and I'm going to get labeled a bias now because I'm now looking at this video. So I'm not going to say much in that video because check, check me now. Look at my, my aggression now because I know what's going to happen if I do debate against what that lady said in that video. So let's just leave it at that, okay? So it's rather cool to label myself and label my people that they play the sympathy card because I suppose I'm, I'm used to it. I am suppose I'm used to white people also swearing at me, but I also know at the same time nothing will happen. But I just don't want someone of the opposite color, the black person now to label me racist because now they can probably take me to court. You see what I'm saying, people? Our mindset, we are just, we are confused. We are confused. We don't know which way is right and wrong. Our morality, our morality is gone. It's just non-existent anymore. It's gone. So yeah, okay. Yeah. Am I angry now? <laughs> Did I look angry now? You see, this is the thing about us people. We, 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 we quick to assume we quick to make assumptions. And just like the Tutu and I that were having that debate on Friday. It was an interesting one, I must say. Um, I like I liked his mindset. And I think I think he felt the same about me. Um, we quickly calmed the situation down, we got to a nice understanding. And Tutsu, I take my hat off to you. No, you were you were like a channel. Um Tutsu, I promised him that I was gonna make a video and I and I did, and I'm sticking to my word. Why? Probably because I want to prove to everyone out there that we don't have to be a racist. We don't have to be biased. Um, educate yourself. Equip yourself. Yeah. Change your mindset. There's so much out there. Society is not what it is. Uh, 20 years ago, Leon Sister, when he made his movies, if he had to make the same type of movies today, society would be offended. There would be a lot of hate speech and they would want to see Leon sister in court today. This is how society has changed over the last 20 odd years. We're just not the same anymore. We, we, we're going backwards guys, we really are. And hatred is taking over. And why? Because the politician, the politician, he wants you to think in that way. He wants you to feel this hatred towards everybody. Okay. In, in, in our case, it's, it's the white man. It's, it's me. The hatred has been shown towards me. The hatred has been shown towards Jan van Ribbik. Because when Jan van Ribbik landed here yeah, in 1652, our problem started. I'm going to say yes. Because when Jan van Ribbik landed, British settlers came. The Dutch settlers came. The British realized what potential was in this country. The Dutch, well, the Afrikaners, they also realized and they 
thought they're not going to give it up without a fight. And they had a fight. The Boer War. And so it escalated. And so South Africa became for what it is because of the diamonds and because of the minerals and the gold that we had in this country. So, yeah. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there because I'm getting into far now. But let me just... Let me just end it off in saying again that we should have never we should have never landed on this country. We should have just left South Africa alone. Um, I think none of this would have been a reality today if we just left South Africa alone. Yeah, okay. All right. Let me let me sign off. Thank you, guys. Take it easy, and remember to uh, keep it real.